My name is Dagjan Haugru and I have made the film uh, called Sex. It's in the panorama. Anna Rial Nilal Sex with a man. Och jag tror att ehm är det Nej, det är inte. Jo, men inte spör om det. Men Men nej, men inte spör. Men ja, nej, han han sa att jag vet han är han är inte homo, ser du? Nej. Nej, han är inte. Kan väl diskutera det, visst han har legat med en man. Alltså homosexualitet är inte bara en identitet, det är ju en aktivitet då. Ja. Som man helt klart har deltagit i, visst han har haft sex med en man. Jo. Ja, ja, du menar det. Mhm. Mm Ja, men nu var det ju det handlar om om mig att för att då då han fortalte om det sexuella mötet där så sa han att det handlade om hur en andra man så på ham. Att han aldrig hade sett det som blick och det det handlar ju inte om mig helt åt men det var akkurat som jag skönt akkurat det, skönar du? Nej. För det handlar ju inte om sex för din del. Nej. Det är riktigt det. Nej. Det handler om forventninger, at man er vant til at folk forventer så innmari mye av deg, og så prøver du å leve opp til det, og så var det så utrolig befriende at noen så på meg bare uten de forventningene. Hello and welcome to the 38th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig, and today I'm here with director Dark Johan Haugerud to talk about his film Sex. But very pleased to meet you and very happy you could make it here. Yeah, thank you. And thank you so much for Sex. It's um, a very beautiful and intricate film and I found it very, very tender in the way it tells the story. Um, on, the, on the surface level, it's, it's about two chimney sweepers, mm -hmm. one experiencing his first sexual encounter with a man, which is sort of transforming his life. Mm -hmm. And the other one having recurring dreams about, well, about David Bowie seeing him as, as or treating him as a woman. Mm -hmm. And both experiences sort of make them question their own standing and their own relations to, to gender and sexual role models. Mm. Um, maybe you could start with telling us how the idea for the film came to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, it came from... Uh, uh, I, I, I try to remember what came up first. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, it happened uh, at the same time on, on many levels, really. But, uh, it started with me wanting to write something uh, peculiar to these actors who are playing them, mm -hmm. uh, because I worked with them before and I wanted to work with them again, and I wanting, wanted to, to give them characters to work on that was different from what they have been working on before, yeah. and uh, wanting them to try to explore some different things in themselves. Okay. Um, and at the same time, I went to this student festival, mm -hmm. And then there was a journalist who asked me why there was never any sex in my films. Yeah. And, uh, but I thought it's, it is sex in my films, uh, although it's not, you know, it's not people having sex, it's not much nudity or much mm. sexual action. But it's definitely sex, I think. Um, and then we were discussing what is sex, really? Yeah. And when, when do you say that now it's sex yeah. and now it's not sex? Yeah. Uh, and so I uh, decided that I wanted to try to, to write three movies that was explicitly about sexuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, as I was writing for these actors, I was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And one of the first things I really loved about the film was um, how you managed the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Because the, the introductory scene alone, it's so... You know, we start out with one of your protagonists telling us about his dream. Yeah. And, and we, we are completely taken by it and we are in his story. And then it sort of shifts all of a sudden and you, you know, the camera turns and we see that it's not some sort of interrogation, but it's 
a conversation between mm. friends mm. and colleagues, mm. and um, then the, the story of the of the sexual encounter completely overtakes the the mood of the communication, mm. so to speak. Mm. Um, could you tell me a little bit about how you started writing the dialogue, or how you approached it? Uh, yeah, I have been working with a film that isn't similar, but it is quite similar in form. Mm -hmm. with this, uh, the same photographer and um, she approached me for some years ago and asked me if I could write a really long dialogue uh, that we could do in one take and then also during this one take try to establish different rooms in that take, you know, just with the camera movement. Yeah. Yeah. And so we did that, it was a different film and we wanted to explore it further and yeah. Yeah. make it even longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Scene and and uh, yeah, so um, that was the starting point for the dialogue, really. Yeah, the dialogue that could just go on. Yeah. Mm. Did you? Was there any inspiration for the for the David Bowie dream, or where where did that come from? Mm. Oh, it's it came. Small. Yeah, but David Bowie is a yeah, he's a symbol. Yeah. yeah very known for everybody. Yeah. Uh, for uh, uh, transgressive sexuality, I would say. Mm. True. A person that everyone knows, and uh, and you know, uh, an artist and, uh, that I like yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's different scenes in the film where the um, the conversation turns sort of um, into a sort of demonstration. I would say. In the sense that, for example, we have the scene with the voice coach, yeah, and all of a sudden the the conversation turns into a talk about the the worldviews of of Hannah Arendt, yeah, or in a different scene um, we have the doctor sort of going into the story about the two architects mm. who are in love, mm. uh, and one having a tattoo on his back to show his love. Um, where did those ideas come from? And uh, they were developed during the, the script, uh, trying to make this, give this story uh, more complex, more complexity, mm -hmm. really, and, uh, and more levels, mm -hmm. and that you can read it in many ways. Yeah. Uh, I usually try to do that if it's possible. Yeah. Because uh, I, al I also think that it gives the film a variation. Yeah, yeah. So it's it has a theme, it has a subject, it has a story, but you can also uh, find other things to think about and relate to. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. The film is, at its center, I, I felt that it was also, um, it was very much a, a meditation sort of on, on masculinity, mm -hmm. on what it means to kind of let yourself go from all these established sort of sexual or non-sexual role models. Um, how how did you approach that topic? Like when you when you looked at it, did you go okay? So I can maybe give sort of this standpoint to that person, or maybe I can develop it through the film. Mm. Uh, it was also developed uh, with the actress. Yeah. Because this Tui um, Bernhard, who plays one of the chimney uh, sweepers that has this recurring dream mm -hmm. about David Bowie, he, uh, he has been thinking about this a lot. What does it mean to be a man? Yeah. What yeah. does it mean to be a woman? How does it feel? Yeah. Uh, and how do I know if what you feel as a woman isn't yeah. the same that I yeah. feel as a man? And when he sees another man, he, he can certainly recognize him as a man, but uh, his masculinity doesn't really, it doesn't necessarily identify that masculinity yeah. he sees with yeah. himself. Yeah. So uh, that was questions he had been yeah, struggling, or not struggling, but thinking about a lot and yeah. discussing with yeah. his wife. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it came from a conversation with him, I think, mostly. Uh, and I have been thinking about those questions as well, when we, yeah. because we are we are talking a lot about typical masculine uh, uh, yeah, expressions and typical mm. female expressions and, and what is that really. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And for the uh, other character <laughs> who's experiencing yeah. this uh, sexual encounter, that was uh, really an. Um, I came up on. Uh, I don't. Uh, I must come up with the right word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Survey about sexuality mm -hmm. among gay men. Yeah. And they were asking how many men uh, consider themselves gay and how many uh, will um, say that they have had sex with another man. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got a lot more answers from the men who say they have sex with another man, but who doesn't consider themselves gay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, that percent is much higher. Yeah. yeah. And that is certainly an issue in the film that is developed through the dialogue, really. You know, that's mm. the discussions he has with his wife. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, that is. Are you really sure that you are not gay? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other protagonist has a discussion with his wife about the topic in which she says, well, it's not just, you know, being gay, being queer is not just an identity, it's also an activity. An activity yeah. And you, you can see that in, in the dialogue. And, and mm -hmm. one of your protagonists, well, both of your protagonists are family people, they, they have children. Yeah, quite ordinary people, yeah. what they meant to be. Yeah. yeah. And then. One of the, the, the discussions or the dialogue I, li I liked a lot is one of your protagonists talking to his son about a YouTube career, so to speak, yeah. mm. and sort of building up, you know, like a resume or, or starting a career, mm -hmm. what it means to be good enough or not good enough and grades and the pension and everything. Mm. Mm. Um, how did you, um, what was the importance to you to talk about that sort of father-son relationship and the, the sort of discussion one has with children about what it's like growing up and having these role models? Mm -hmm. uh, no, this, the, the, son, the character of the son, he is meant to be an, kind of an observer. Mm -hmm. He observes his, his uh, parents and he's also, I think, uh, I want him to represent the youth of today, yeah. Yeah. because they may see things differently. They may not be that concerned about uh, uh, the same questions about sexuality and identity as as people over 40. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite different. And uh, I also wanted. To, uh, I think it's very interesting for me to try to to set up a um, um, film that says this is not strictly reality, but this is how it could be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I wanted to... to uh, uh, find ways to show a family that are quite connected and mm -hmm. not afraid of talking about things, sure. and not afraid about talking about things concerning sexuality, even if there is a child there. Yeah, because yeah. it's not really, uh, it's not nothing to be afraid of, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So if they are creating a kind of safe environment for the conversation, that would, uh, I think, that would be good for the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I was, also. I was very excited by the the feeling you you get from these family conversations mm. that they have because they seem to be, you know, they they don't store anything away. They talk about everything mm. that they can and uh, um, and. Also, of course, the, the son being the sort of observer that filters everything through his eyes, mm. young eyes, mm. and goes like, well, that's now you rem remember the song. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, you, you wouldn't sing it earlier. Mm. Which is, by the way, another point that I wanted to talk about, because at certain points you have this kind of, this two ways of interpretation, which one would be sort of, a queer aspect of things and one would be a religious aspect of mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. um, and at one point your, your protagonists have this have this conversation where they go okay well admitting that you're a Christian must be even harder than me admitting I had sex with a man mm -hmm. um, 
what was important to you in putting these two together or talking about the, the, the religious aspect of one of the protagonists? Uh, I wanted to, to picture a family that has a faith that, has, that is Christian mm -hmm. and that, that faith is just, a, they have a kind of everyday faith that mm -hmm. it, it's not a problem for them they, yeah. and they are not uh, predators or yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. even if they are Christians, they are just yeah, quite good people. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that was uh, one of the points. And then I, um, in some, I think in some social settings, uh, I think it's true that it's harder to, to talk about your faith and to talk about mm -hmm. religion than to talk about your sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, not everywhere, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's not true. even in Norway. I think in Nor the Norwegian society is quite liberated, I would think. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I would think that this in Oslo or in the bigger cities, uh, this could be true that yeah, it is yeah, hard to yeah. to talk about religion. But in the, uh, in the countryside, I'm not so sure it's like that. Yeah, yeah. But true. I wanted it to to picture it like uh, this is normal. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a problem. Uh, come to think of it. Um, Obviously, the, the, the topics you touch upon in the film are much broader than, than nationality or national borders. Mm -hmm. But would you consider a part of the discussion you have in the film to be also, you know, a comment on Norwegian society as it stands? Um, a comment on uh, the living conditions, maybe, mm -hmm. in Oslo and, the, and how the city is evolving, because uh, uh, I don't know if you have mentioned that, but this is the first part of a, a trilogy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's two more films, yeah. uh, which deals with the same subjects in uh, in different ways, um, and they all have this take on Oslo, different yeah. takes on Oslo, and yeah. showing Oslo how yeah. it is developing and how, we, how yeah, um. how the the politics are uh, developing the the city yeah. and the living conditions. Can you tell us anything about how these films, like uh, you obviously working on them mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. um, is there anything you can tell us about them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, the, the tr trilogy is called Sex, Dreams and Love. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first film is Sex and the second one is uh, Dreams, uh, Drømmer in Norwegian. And that is about a, a young girl's sexual awakening mm -hmm. and uh, how her family reacts to that. Yeah. She fell in love with her teacher and uh, yeah, it's about the first love really. Mm -hmm. And the first feeling of that something is happening in her body when yeah. she's looking at another person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very much, very <laughs> much looking forward to mm -hmm. that. Um, and the third film is about cruising. Oh yeah, mm. okay, yeah. So that's a whole nother, whole nother world, whole nother aspect of it. Mm, mm. Um, there's also uh, one of the things I, I liked was how you use music in the film, mm. because it seems to elevate certain scenes, you know, when it's moving around the city and you have this almost symphonic mm. score mm. underneath it and it seems to you know it, it, it suggests that there's more than just somebody moving through the city it's also about living in the city and the city itself how mm. it works mm. and then at the same time you have specifically in the beginning you have sort of like this this well that's not the right word but uh, like a sort of synth pop mm. um, score there um, what what was your idea behind using these these musical pieces uh, I, I usually like music to be, I, I'm, I'm not particularly fond of score, regular mm -hmm. score. It is some score in this film, but uh, when the music comes, it comes, you know, it has uh, a place of its own in yeah. a way. Yeah. So it's kind of like a music video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's all, uh, I also like musicals in a way, and, mm. I, uh, and I try to regard each film I make as a musical. Yeah, yeah. But not much with the regular song and dance number, but mm. that each film should have some music and should have some dance. Because sure. I think yeah. that song and dance lightens up 
the yeah. movie in a way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we try to do it in quite different ways than yeah. an ordinary musical. No, that's true. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil too much for the audience <laughs> out there, but we do have a very beautiful performance mm. in one of the scenes of the film. Mm. And I think it's true that the, the, the music stands for its own in, in many scenes because it's, you know, it's, it's not just amplifying the scenes, it's, huh. it takes its own room, yeah. in a sense. That was yeah. what it was meant to yeah. be, so <laughs> thank you for noticing yeah. that. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, you su succeeded very much mm -hmm. in that, mm -hmm. yeah. And as you call it a city symphony, that was a, a word we used a lot mm -hmm. when we were when uh, we were planning the film, me and the photographer. We yeah. wanted to, to try to find a way to, to make a kind of a city symphony. Yeah, mm. I think that's, that's how it turned out. I was trying to find the right word. Mm. At first I went with operatic mm. in a way, but that's not quite it. Mm. But it has kind of the, the complexity and this, you know, I don't know, serene feeling. Mm. Of, of a symphonic piece. Um, well, I think that's it for me. Mm. Doug, thank you very much for, you. for taking the time <laughs> and for being here. And thank you so much again for the film. And I wish you all the best yeah. for the Berlinale. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.